Say hello to the BMW M5 Touring. Um, it's back, finally. Everyone that's been asking for it, it's here. So let me take you around it. So today is literally just me, no cameraman. So excuse the janky angles, but look how beautiful the new M5 Touring looks. So um, essentially, it's the exact same as the BMW M5 that I posted a few weeks ago. Um, you're probably thinking, Tommy, why are you in the same clothes? Do you not have any other clothes in your wardrobe? And uh, my answer to that is I filmed these both on the same day, but I'm only allowed to talk about about this now. Um, this car is so stunning. Again, essentially it's the exact same as the M5. Increased load capacity in the rear. I'll put that down there because right now we're not sure what the exact load capacity is of the car, but in this wonderful Isle of Man green, the car really, really shows how extravagant this touring version looks, how aggressive it still is, but how practical it is also on this car it is a hybrid as the one i showed you before on this side we have the fuel filler cap and if you go around you have the charging port on the front quarter of the car and that allows you to charge the 18.7 kilowatt hour battery it can charge in about three hours on a 7.2 kilowatt hour charger later on they are introducing an 11 kilowatt hour charger but i don't think anyone's really going to be bothered by that most homes in this country are single phase in the uk that is even in the world so um 7.2 kilowatt hours is probably enough uh, and that allows you to charge in just over three hours providing you with 42 miles of range if we go around to the front i've got the keys in my pocket it somewhere i did have the keys in my pocket i can unlock it for you and you will see the light signature of the car i love this iconic glow grill when i first saw them on other bmws i thought it was corny but now as a recently um involved bmw fan i can say that this iconic glow grill just looks so menacing i can imagine again this coming towards you and looking so aggressive with those lights as well underneath we have these um, radiator vents so there's a lot of radiator space down there cooling and it's signifying how powerful the engine underneath the bonnet is again you still have the same powertrain as the regular m5 so you have the 4.4 liter v8 coupled with the 18.7 kilowatt hour battery with a total output of 1000 newton meters of torque and 727 horsepower um, zero to 60 time on the touring i'm not um i haven't been told yet i assume it'll be a bit slower than the regular car just because of the increased weight again i'm not sure what the increased weight is as well on this car you also have this wonderful wheel design something that i've never seen before i think out of this one and the wheels that i saw on the regular m5 this is more my flavor they just look so intricate and unique 20s at the front and then if we go over to the rear 21 inch you also have this um touring specific rear tail lights again you have the 100 millimeter um, exhaust pipes four of them and they're real on this car again bmw knows what to do when it comes to exhaust and then instead of fake vents you've got a reflector there which is nice a nice touch so it doesn't add any fakery to the car the hips are wider than a regular five series touring just marginally you can tell by the design and the car stance seems to be a lot lower than the regular five series touring the interior of the touring just provides a bit more additional practicality because you have a bit more space and it looks wonderful in this mandarin color you still have these m focused seats that provide you with a lot of bolstering so they feel sporty but they also feel comfortable and then you have your new m performance steering wheel with a flat bottom something that's fresh for this generation of m5 m1 and m2 switches on the steering wheel allowing you quick access to your preferential driving mode so you can set those up individually so if you want traction off on one and then you want full stability on on the other you can have that set up it's nice it's such a good thing to do especially in this position it just feels great when you're driving and you're going down the road you can just switch quick fire between modes so in my uh, bmw m3 touring i had a comfort setting that was still performance orientated and then i had a haywire full performance mode that i used rarely but it was just nice to have you also in the m5 touring have this wonderful carbon interior that is um something that comes with all m5s now Bowers and Wilkins system comes as standard, which is great. And this wonderful ambient light signature along the interior just makes it feel super luxurious. As I hop inside the car, I'll show you around and just show you how BMW have managed to keep the focus on luxury and not forget that this is still a performance car so down here you have your m specific center console with your red buttons for your start and stop your hybrid modes your traction and so on and then you also have the new version of bmw's infotainment system iDrive 8.5 it's not an easy system to get used to it takes a few days but once you're used to it, it becomes super intuitive if i take a look behind me you can see you also have a full panoramic roof in this the m5 touring unfortunately doesn't come with a carbon roof as an option but you do have panoramic roof as an option 
option, which I think most people will choose. Other than that, you can just have a standard roof, which will keep it quite dark in here. I like how the panoramic opens the interior up, just makes it feel like a bit of a better place to be, a bit better for the people in the back as well, which I'll get to in a second, but there's loads of storage down here, enough space for you to put large size cups and bottles down here. And then you have wireless charging mats over there as well. My only qualm with the interior on the M5 is that the switch gear for the windows seems to be just out of the regular five series, which is unfortunate, but you can't expect them to change everything. But in total, in all, this is a great high quality interior. It just feels plush and luxurious, but you still have those hints of performance when you look down and you see your red start button or your red M1 and M2 mode. It just, it just shows you that this car is just ready to pounce at any time, which is a nice thing to have. But if you want to just cruise down the road in absolute bliss, you can still do that. If I hop out and go to the rear of the car in this wonderful studio, this reminds me of the Matrix scene, you know, when near, anyway, when you go into the rear of the car, again, this wonderful Mandarin interior just looks so gorgeous but there's enough space for me to sit behind myself comfortably, which is great. As someone who's six foot, I struggle to get in the back of cars, but this I'll be absolutely fine. You have your own um, individual climate control settings for the rear, heated seats, and then also, which is really cool, USB-C there and two more USB-Cs here. So four USB slots in the rear in total, which is nice if you have a lot of devices. Isofix seats, something that is great for when you have a child. And then again, this panoramic roof just looks so good, especially sitting back here. You get a nice open view of the sky, which will just make this rear seat just feel a bit more spacious. And I feel if I flip the camera around, you also get more headroom with a panoramic roof, which is really nice as an added plus of having a panoramic just makes it a bit thinner, but there's tons of headroom in here regardless. And I think there's even more than in the saloon version, which is a great bonus if you um, have a tall family. Now let's see where the true magic is in the M5 Touring. We take a look at the load space in the rear again masses of space, automatic boot cover. Uh, I keep going to do it manually because I'm old school, but tons of space back there and a very accessible, a great low lit cover. It's got this aluminium here to protect it. Um, I like it. Oh, and unlike the other model, under floor storage, which is great. The only thing I don't like back here is this wiper. I feel like um, BMW should try and hide their wipers up here and have them wipe like that, but I don't know. Um, I'm literally just clutching at straws. This car is gorgeous and there's not much I can say about it other than the wiper. And I feel like it could have been slightly more aggressive. The saloon just seems a bit more angry looking, especially from the side and a bit more identifiable as an M car, but this car still looks gorgeous, especially from the front. And then again, when I unlock the car and you see the grill that will be on again when you unlock the car or when you're driving down the road, it just looks so menacing. I love it. Uh, uh, let me know what you think about the new BMW M5 Touring. I've tried to give you a down to earth review of just a regular person going through it. Again, the full stats on the M5 are available on my M5 video. But for now, this is the M5 Touring.